All right, everybody. Uh, today we got the McCormick. Uh, it's an MTX 200 in the shop. Um, uh, let me show you the paper towel here first. Went to check on the planetaries, and all of this gunk was on the magnets. You can see all the metal shavings and all that crap. Um, probably can't see it down in the oil, but the oil's pretty darn sparkly. Um, so we gotta take take this apart and kind of see what's going on here. Um, I already got the hub. Hub is off over here. There's just two two little screws in it up there. Uh, what the heck were they? A five millimeter, yeah, five millimeter Allen head. I just got these Allen head sockets from Harbor Freight. Work pretty good for that. Um, zip them out. So I already looked at the, sun, or the planetary gears here and they look pretty good so I'm not going to mess with them. They feel good. They spin nice. So you don't feel any grinding or anything when you spin them. So that feels nice. And there's that magnet that I was talking about that had all sorts of gunk and um, all those metal shavings on it. So I figured I better get this done before we go out and try to do a bunch of disking or something out there and end up getting screwed. So, all right. So, um, for these, there is a O ring that goes around the whole thing. Um, I'm going to end up replacing that um, to make sure that this stays sealed up. Actually, it is leaking a little bit of oil out the back. You can see all that oil around it. So. Um, so right now we got to get this inner gear out and there should be I believe a snap ring way back in here that I will try to take a better picture of when I get this um, kind of apart here so I got to turn the wheel all the way to one side and then um, hopefully I can get that snap ring out I believe I've showed in a different video, uh, modified snapping pliers that I got, um, that I modified myself with a torch, and we're going to need to use that probably to get it out because that's what I had to do for the case 215 one that I've done before, and this looks pretty similar. So the design. So let me work on that, and I'll try to get you a picture of that snapping. All right, I don't see a C clip on the back side, but. This guy right in front here is a clip. Um, so we'll have to get that off and then see. And then we should be able to get this ring back here off and take these bolts out and slide um, this big gear off, I guess. Um, so yeah, you can see this little. Oop. Put the damn light back up. Get in here. This clip right in front here. And turn it with the screwdriver here. See this guy right here, we'll have to get that off. And then pull from there, I guess. See, you can see it turning a little bit. Um, so I'll we'll have to get that out, and then like I said, then this ring kind of lock collar for these bolts. So we'll get that off, then take the bolts out and see if you slide the hub over top of the sun gear here in the middle or what you got to do but so far I'm not seeing any damage um, I don't know if you can if the camera kind of picks that up or not if you can kind of hear the bearing going so I'll take that off and see got that little C clip out uh, ended up using a pair of uh, needle nose and gripping it on the back side, kind of pulling it back as much as I could to pop the back off and then taking a screwdriver and popping the two front parts off. Um, and then I just slid it off the shaft. Uh, then we got this little, I don't know, it's like a lock of some sort. The back does spin, um, but I just slid that off. It's a two, there's two different pieces here. They're stuck together by oil, but um, so the inner part, let's see, the spline part here goes in front of the other locking part that 
actually locks in between the bolts and I'm assuming locks them on play into place. So let's take those bolts out and then I believe this whole outer ring should pop off and that looks like it's in pretty good condition. So I'm assuming the bearing must just be going out or something. Um, you kind of see it back in there. But, all right, let's, everything else looking good so far. None of the gears look chipped or anything like that. The sun gear still, uh, that must almost be connected right to the damn dry shaft there or something. Cause that feels pretty, pretty snug yet. Like I said, I did not see any snap rings or anything on the yoke and back. Um, kind of see in there a little bit. I didn't see any snap rings way in there that would be able to get this piece off. So I guess we'll just kind of keep taking it apart from this side and see, see what we come up with. So. All right, let's do that and we'll see kind of where we end up. All right, so I got those center bolts out and actually I put two of them back in here. There's spots on the side here where it started um, to kind of pull that off. Um, just make sure you're doing them down evenly. Otherwise, it's going to kind of get cockeyed in there and you're going to have a heck of a time pulling it off. So far, it's going pretty good. Because um, it must kind of be pressed into that center bearing, I guess. So, just figured I'd show that. Um, yeah, and if, do it pretty gently. I mean, it's coming hard, but it's it's coming nice and steady. So, just be careful that you don't wreck these bolts otherwise you'll have to get some new ones or if you have more of them on hand I don't know what size it's a metric fine thread so what they are I don't know what size it's a 22 mil socket um, on them but you could use new bolts if you got them we don't have any of that size so just reusing these ones and if I damage them I'll have to get new ones so I'll keep pulling this off and see how it goes all right got that ring gear off Um, so it just, just had these little sleeves, um, right here, these sleeves that the bolts went through, they kind of were sleeved up into this piece here, just kind of a press fit in there, it looks, seemed like, um, so that's kind of what was holding this back there, so, uh, now we're got access to the bearing here, should be able to pull that out and we'll, Oh yeah, that bearing seems not good. So, uh, we'll keep working at it. All right, can't remember really where I left off here, but um, I got that ring gear out and I got the front bearing and the rear bearing off. The main hub just kind of pulls off. Um, and now, Let's see, there was a sleeve here. All right, sorry, I got a call there. Um, so this sleeve was sitting right up in there. I mean, this is our, definitely our cause of our problems. It was very loose. I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but back here, my one finger is, you can see it's kind of ripped out, flaky right there. There's chunks missing out of it. Yeah, so this is definitely our cause or problem. It's just like a sleeve that goes around this uh, input shaft here. So that was definitely our issue. Um, right now I'm going to take the cap, clean that up, take the cap off the top, take the cap off the bottom, and then pull that whole knuckle off. Um, that way I can replace the seals that are inside that. So if I can get this tie rod loose, I'll pop it off there too and just take the knuckle right off. Otherwise, I'll swing it out of the way and go that route with it. So we'll see kind of how it goes here. All right, I got a couple steps done since my last little check in here. Um, as you can see, I have the knuckle is off. Um, I did end up just leaving it on the tie rod there and just kind of swinging it out of the way because I was having a heck of a time getting the tie rod to break loose. Um, so I just just took the caps off and swung it out of the way, it's fine. Um, I have the new seal replaced and 
that little bronze bushing behind it, I have that also replaced. And I will say that those two things were a mother to get out. Um, a seal, I ended up, I broke my seal puller trying to get it out. I had just wouldn't come out and that little bronze bushing is, uh, let's see, here's the, here's the old one. You can see it's quite thin on the end, so it's very difficult to get on the back of it and get it pulled out. And behind it, again, where my thumb is, there's a plate in there that it stops it up against. So you're really, really not much room to get around and get the thing pulled out. Um, what I ended up having was I got these, this thing from Harbor Freight here, rear axle bearing pullers. I guess I don't have any in there anymore. Um, they're just these suckers. So you can slide them in through the bushing, flip it out and pull it. Um, that way I ended up using this. It worked kind of. Um, it wasn't, wasn't ideal. Um, maybe if you have the just perfect size, like I said, I mean, this sucker's only, I don't know what, a sixteenth of an inch wide. So you have to one, have one that just fits it perfect in that bore. Um, because if you're too far back, you're catching on that little plate behind it that stops it. And, uh, it was just, just a nightmare. Um. But got it out and got that replaced. And I mean, they pound in tough too, so I mean, it is a snug fit. So, but that's that's done with. Um, the axle that was there, I got sitting sitting over here. Um, that input shaft I was mentioning earlier, it is just part of the yoke there. It's all one piece. There's no no separation here. Um, so that comes out with the shaft and the other end Is just splined. Let me get that ring gear off of it. It just has splines that fit into the differential. So uh, when you're putting it back in just Kind of rotate it slightly those splines should line up and should slide right back in um, I'd put a little bit of uh, gear lube in the seals that are in the axle tube on those bushings and then probably even a little bit you can kind of see here's where the one bushing is going to ride and then actually when we get to that point here's that other bushing where that other bushing will ride um, now this is the side that failed uh, i think i showed that earlier that how it was all broken up um, so i just kind of felt all around here make sure that wasn't too marred up or something where we'd have to put a sleeve on that but it feels feels good enough where it uh, shouldn't be a problem. So uh, my next step, I'm going to put the drive shaft back in, get that all situated in there, and then I'll put the knuckle back on. You can see I got the two caps sitting back here. So I'll put those two caps back on, get that thing set. And these are different caps. Um, I know some tractors are not, and some they are. So this one, it's just more of a squared part, and this one is rounded here at the top. So they are different, so keep them separate. Um, I don't know if, I don't know, I guess I didn't measure it to see if they're gonna, if one would work in the other stone slot. I know the bottom one wouldn't work in the top slot because this top part is narrower than this top part. But the, bot or the top one might work in the bottom, so just keep them separate. Uh, I got the old bearings are sitting there. I got some new bearings over there somewhere. Um, I have to take the old races out of here. I'm just gonna take a chisel or a punch me and pound them out, um, one on each side. Uh, they are the same bearing, so that's at least nice. You can't mess that up. Um, just put the races in the correct direction, facing outward. Um, and then I have to put the seal seal in the back of the knuckle there got to clean it up a bit better it's got all that gunk and crap on it you can see it's been leaking for a while and it's got grease and all that crap all over it so i uh, get that cleaned up afterward and then uh, then let's see where's here is the new sleeve here's the one that failed actually 
If I can open it up here with one hand, I'll show you quick. Be able to see the difference in it. Hopefully. So here is the new new one you can see. It's got a nice layer of bronze or brass. I don't know what that actually is, but nice layer. It's got a little kind of cross hatching here for something. But I don't know if that's just a I don't know. <laughs> Some engineer probably knows, but I don't. But um, that we'll have to get that pressed in. I'm assuming the old other one, the old one, just pulled out by hand. But I'm assuming the new one's going to fit snugger, uh, so I'll have to probably pop that guy in. And I'm just using uh, the seal driver here to pound the seals and braces and um, bushings in. So these races, I'll probably have to get a block of wood or something to use for that. I don't have a seal driver big enough for that block of wood or a piece of metal or something for that but uh, I think that's pretty much kind of the general gist that we're going with here and then I'll start putting everything back together and I'll take a couple shots kind of here and there as I put shit back together so you can kind of know know just how it's going um, so well I suppose with that I'll get back to it and get on with this job and get done all right, so far here everything seems to be going back together pretty nicely. Um, got those end caps or the top and bottom caps are on. Um, the main hub part here is back on. Knuckles all tightened down. That's all good to go. Um, <clears throat> just got the ring gear back pressed on. Uh, I just use the bolts to kind of pull it back in. Uh, just. Don't do it all on one bolt and then switch another one. I just kept going around in circles. Actually, like a star pattern and then um, got that tightened up. Uh, I went past the torque spec for it, tightened it way up as as I could get it first, then backed them all off and then retorqued them all. Um, the torque spec for those are 89 foot pounds according to the guy at the dealer. Um, but everything went together nicely. Uh, this little snap ring up here was a little tight going in there, so it's just a bit tight. I'm sure that'll all kind of settle out. I mean, you can spin this thing. It does spin. It's not not seized up, so she's all the other right. But those always are a little tight when you first get them back together. So, uh, other than that, everything's... Things going pretty good here so far. The only thing I have to do yet, I have to tighten up that tie rod and back here, that guy. And then uh, just put the planetary hub back on. Get that, put that in with the ring gear and line everything up, which is sometimes kind of a chore to get all your gears to mesh up correctly, but uh, shouldn't be too bad. Uh, all the bearings and stuff, I put a little bit of uh, gear oil. This is what goes inside it. It's 85, 140 gear oil. I kind of pre-lubed them a little bit so that they don't start completely dry. Uh, we got that new O-ring put on up top here. That just sits in that little groove. Uh, but yeah, overall everything's going together pretty smoothly. So we'll get that planetary all lined up and when you put that on make sure you line up the screw holes here. There's one here and one on the other side down there. Got to make sure those are lined up. And I would um, have it so those are pretty close to level so that when you put the hub on um, Actually, let's see. Actually, you're gonna want these straight up and down. Put them straight up and down so when you put the hub back on, the fill port is gonna be level. So you can fill it back up right away to the proper proper level, get it all taken care of without having to drop the tractor, move it a little bit, then, uh, then fill it, so. All right, I'll get another shot when I'm all wrapped up here. 
All right, gonna finish this one up here. Got everything put back together. The planetary hub's back on, main hub, everything's good to go. Um, got the two screws put up here and on the bottom. Uh, if you can see it, it's right there. Um, those were, the dealer guy told me 18 foot pounds. I didn't really put a torque wrench on them. I just tightened it down snug. They're not very big screws, so don't overdo it. Um, got it refilled up with the 85, 140 um, gear oil, and then I topped off the front axle too. So here's what I mean, you gotta, when you fill them, you gotta do it. It's not quite level, but it's pretty damn close, so that's good enough. Um, you gotta have it so the plug's on one side or the other so you know how much to put in. Because um, if you have the plug too high or on the bottom, then you'll have to move it to get it level. But I'm sure if you're doing this job, you'd know that already. So um, the only thing got to do yet, put the fender back on, put the tire on. And hopefully should be good to go. Um, take it easy for the first little drive around. And then shouldn't have any problems. I cleaned up um, the oil off the back of the hub there so that I know if it if one of the seals didn't seal upright or tore it or something going in. Um, I'll know if it keeps leaking, but uh, that should be pretty much everything here. So thanks for watching. Um, hopefully, I mean, most of these hubs are pretty similar. I know at least for the kind of case McCormick brand here, I'm assuming New Holland's are probably similar. I haven't done any of them, but uh, I've done a couple of case ones and one on the New Holland here. So, or the McCormick. Um, most of them fairly similar, some slight differences, but um, just kind of how stuff's mounted and whatnot in there. It's it's fairly easy to look at and kind of see how it goes together. So pretty simple job. Um, I don't know. If you're working at it straight, probably took a couple hours. Um, this is the second day, I guess about a day and a half it took me just because every hour or so every half hour hour i have to stop and go do something else and then they only get a couple hours a day to work on it an hour or two a day to work on it so but uh, with that if you like this check out some of the other stuff um and like if you have any comments let me know and i'll see you in the next one